Okay, this is lesson 10.7, uh, more on power series. Our focus today is to try to write functions into power series. Um, so we have these functions that we are so used to, like e to the x, one over one uh, plus x, and we can rewrite them into a power series that we were introduced to in 10.6. So remind yourself of what a power series is, is when you apply x to a power to a pre-existing pre series here, and each of the terms, the power gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And so we can actually find a power series that is the same as a function. So it's actually kind of cool. So um, how do we see that? We actually It's actually easier to start backwards. Let's start with... Um, looking at a series here and see if we can find it, turn it into a function that we recognize, right? So here we have the series. The pattern is one and a negative X and the X squared and a negative X cubed. So you can see that the pattern here is that the terms are increasing by multiplying by a negative X. So this is a multiplication. This is a common ratio between each of the term. So the ratio is equal to negative X, hence making this a geometric series. All right, so geometric series with a uh, ratio equaling to negative x. Now we know for a geometric series, if the absolute value of the r is less than one, it will converge. And so with what we are doing here, we have to have this series being a convergent series. Otherwise, then it doesn't make sense to create, um, to change it into a function because it's gonna diverge into infinity, right? So we always want a converging series. So that's why this is one of the conditions. Hence your negative x here is less than one right and so this this has a radius of convergence that is um between negative one and one right and so we know then that because the geometric series we know it will converge because i'm forcing it to so this is only true if x is between negative one to one and we know that a converging geometric series the sum of a converging geometric series is the formula of a sub one over one minus r right so in this particular equation my a sub one is one, my ratio is one minus negative x. So this is actually the formula the function of one plus one over one plus x, all right? So this, um, sorry, this function can be denoted by this sequence, uh, sorry, these, this series of one minus x plus x squared minus x cubed. Really, this is the C uh, series, <laughs> n equals zero, infinity, negative one to the n, x to the n. Right. So the idea of today's lesson is to build these um, functions where we know these functions um, are connected to one of these series and then manipulate a little bit more of the function and then see how that translates into a new uh, series for us. All right. So again, the goal of today is to build a few things into your library, so-called. And so that way you can have more to um, play around with and manipulate and then create new series and see new patterns yourself. All right. So what can I do with this one to create a new one? Well, you can actually take derivatives of series. It's kind of kind of, it's kind of interesting because you basically take the derivative of each of the terms and see how that affects in your uh, general pattern at the end. And so then you can actually create another uh, new uh, function, a function equaling a series in this case. So let's take the derivative on, on both sides. So what I'm doing here, I'm just taking, I'm writing down my action so you know what I'm doing. Take derivative. At both sides. Okay, so we know how to take the derivative of the left side. At the left side, when you take the derivative, we get negative one over one plus x squared, right? If we then take the derivative of each of the term, the first term becomes zero, and then you get negative x plus two x minus three x squared plus four uh, x cubed minus the, so on and so forth, right? So what does that do to my general form? How does that change? Well, this is still alternating. So um, my my um, my first term is negative one to the negative one to the n power, right? It's still alternating, and the first term is still negative. So n equals um, one, actually. So sorry about that. When you take the derivative, this actually starts at n equals one because you will see that when negative one is to the one power, it gives me the first term to be negative, right? Okay. So then what else happens? Well, this piece right here, this is a power, right? So a power rule just drops down the n and the x to the n minus one. And that is your general form. Okay, but this is not as useful to me uh, as I as I want it because I would like my function to be positive. It's actually more useful to me as a positive one over one plus x squared. So let's go ahead and multiply by negative one on both sides. 
That way I can get rid of that negative, right? So yeah, this is just manipulation and I'm doing algebra that is valid because I'm doing the same thing on both sides. So this is definitely something we can do. So this becomes a one over one over one plus X squared. My terms out becomes X minus two X plus three X squared minus four X cubed plus da da da. Okay. So my terms didn't change much, except for the fact that my first term is now not now not negative, right? So I basically applied a negative one to everything. So I added it, I multiplied by an additional negative one. So this was to the n power, I have an additional negative one, so it's n plus one. And the terms here did not change at all. So it's still n dropping the n and the x to the n minus one power, okay? So now we build more to my library. We now have established that one over one plus x squared is equal to this series right here. Okay, kind of nice. So basically you can take any pre-existing power series, do some math and then generate a new power series that, that, that you have here. Okay, what about, um, what if I'm looking for natural log of one, uh, one plus x? Well, again, keep in mind what we can do. We can take, we can do some math. So we can take the derivative. We can also take the integral. So if you recall, if you take the integral one over one plus X, that actually becomes natural log of one plus X, right? And so we can go ahead and take a look at what we had before, right? One over one plus X, that series was going to be, was one minus X plus X squared minus X cubed plus da da da. That is the sum of n equals zero, infinity, uh, negative one to the n, uh, x to the n power, right? Okay, so now what is going to happen? I'm going to need to take the integral because I want natural log of x or natural log of one over one plus x. Okay, so integral the whole thing. That would give me natural log of one plus x is equal to, if I take the antiderivative here, the first term will become x, then I have x squared over two, x cubed over three, x to the fourth over four, so on and so forth. Okay, so when I'm taking the integral, I go backwards. So your um, your starting number is definitely gonna change, still gonna be n equals zero, infinity. My terms are still alternating, so I still have a negative one. Now let's see, to the n power or to the n plus one power? Well, first term is positive, so if I put it to the n power, anything is zero power is positive one, so that's pretty good. Then I uh, figure out my antiderivative. So what is the antiderivative of this? Well, it's x to n plus one power over n plus one, okay? And that's it. So you just do some some math and then you can manipulate, right? So um, your book does like to write it this way though. It likes to write the coefficients all together and then the um, variable term, kind of like that. So again, just be comfortable knowing that you can kind of move things around like so, okay? All right, so here's just kind of a reminder that, hey, if you are, um, your series does converge and has a radius of convergence of R. And so your this is kind of just th saying that you can take the derivative of each term. So this is, first one just reminds you, you can take the derivative of the terms or series, right? So you're okay to do that. And then the second just reminds you, you can take the integral. Integral of each of the term and of the series, and you can get a new one, right? So you can get a new function to match up with a new power series. It's kind of cool. All right, so next we're gonna use this. You have your theorem here, e to the x equals this. This is, um, oh, this is a series that defines e to the x, kind of cool. So it says find a power series representation of x times e to negative two x. So what we're doing here is we're going to take what we know already, what is pre-existing here. We know that e to the x is e equal to x to the n power over n factorial, right? So for me, I'm going to do this step by step. I'm going to take care of e to the negative two x first. So e to the negative two x, what is different is I put my negative two x into the exponent here. So that means anytime I see x in my sequence uh, series here, you are going to replace it with negative two x. So this is one plus negative two x plus negative two x squared over two factorial plus negative two x cubed over three factorial. Da, 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 da. So basically the general term here, the general um, sequence here, sorry, yes, a series here, is going to be negative two x to the n over n factorial. Okay, and so uh, again, your textbook likes to write the coefficients separately. So this will be rewritten as n equals zero, infinity, negative two to the n uh, over n factorial times, I kind of dipped the gun there, uh, x to the n power like so, 
Okay. Don't forget the actual sequence here, um, the actual function we're looking for has an x in front. So we got to multiply by an x. So one more step. So x times e to negative two x. By the way, if you can do all this in one step, you don't really have to do it in two steps like I did here. I'm just trying to show you how I manipulate one one by one, step by step, right? So you're multiplying each term by an x. So that's going to be x times one times x times negative two x plus x times negative two x squared over two factorial x times negative two x cubed over three factorial. Da, 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 da. So what is happening here? I have a more. I have another x, right? So it's x times negative two x to the n over n factorial. So what is really happening here? Your negative two to the n over n factorial is still your um, coefficient. You have an extra x here that's going to be included in this x to the n. So you have x to the n and one more x there. So really you have x to the, sorry, let me write this a little bit better, x to the n plus one, okay? And that would be your new um, power series for this new function that you have, okay? All right, lastly, what's the point of all this? The point of all this is that, you know, you have to recall that this is something developed early, early, early on in the 1600s. So they have no calculators. They really can't evaluate something like this. Now we have our calculator. Yes, we can plug this in using math nine and figure out what the integral is. But let's say you don't. And so you have to figure out, is my approximation good enough? So how do you approximate something like this to four decimal places? Well, you expand this equation out into a series and then use the first few terms by plugging in the numbers. And then you can see um, that you get some accuracy. All right. So Typically, a better question would be saying, hey, uh, find this integral uh, using the first couple of terms, right? And then compare that to the actual value and see how far you are. But uh, we're, uh, the book kind of wants us to do it this way. So let's go ahead and see. It says to approximate this to four decimal places. All right. So first things first, I got to figure out how to rewrite this as a series that I already have. So e to the x is x to n power over n factorial. Hence, e to negative x squared is going to be negative x squared to the n power over n factorial, right? So what does that look like? Because we got to use the first few terms, so this is one of those times where you have to expand this out. If n equals 1, you plug in 1, so, oh, sorry, n equals 0. So if n equals 0, n equals 0 power is 1, 0 factorial is actually 1, so my first term is 1, okay? Second term, if I plug in n equals 1, I get negative x squared over 1, so negative x squared. Next term, n equals 2, so the negative x squared squared is x to the 4th, so positive x to the 4th over 2 factorial. And then next term will be negative x to the 6th over 3 factorial, and then x to the 8th over 4 factorial. You could probably see the pattern already, but this is going to be our um, next couple of terms. Okay, so keep going, right? All right, so um, again, to kind of look ahead um, in the notes here, you actually need a couple more terms here. So you actually need up to 14 over seven factorial and then 16 over eight factorial. All right, so of course there's more here, but um, we need up to one, two, three, four, five, nine, six, seven, eight, nine. So we only need up to, oh, I went too far. <laughs> we need up to the eighth term. Because now what you need to do, and luckily for you, for homework is a little bit shorter, but this is our expansion, right? So this is the, um, this is the series, the power series that represents this function. And we need to take the integral because the problem says we need to integrate and find it evaluated from zero to one. So we need to integrate this and then evaluate zero to one. All right. So if you integrate this, you get X minus X cubed over three plus X to the fifth over five times two factorial minus X to the seventh over seven times three factorial X to the ninth over nine times four factorial x to the 11th over 11 times 5 factorial, and then x to 13 over 13 times 6 factorial, one more, one more, x to 15 over 15 times 7 factorial, any value is 0 to 1. Okay, so um, you can check more, but think about what this is asking you to do. You're evaluating 0 to 1. Plugging the 0 is not going to do anything for us, so really we're looking at just the 1. So the way you approach problems like this is actually you have to test out each term to see which one gives you the decimal place of 0.0000, because it's four decimal place accuracy, right? So whatever the number trailing here, it doesn't matter, but as long as you can get four decimal places of 0, then that is the term that you stop. Well, that is a term after you stop, because remember what we had before. Our 
actual error, our actual number, right? Minus the partial sum that we have here is going to be less than that next number. So what we're looking for is that next number to see when we stop my partial sum. So without wasting your time, you uh, if you plug in one into this term, you will get one over 75,600, which is approximately 0 0.0001322, whatever, right? So this is a term we wanna stop before. So that means you're adding up the partial sum of all of this by plugging in the one. So you are adding up your partial sum of the first seven terms is one minus one third plus one over uh, five times two factorial is 10 minus one over seven times three factorial. That is 42, oops, sorry, 42 plus one over nine times four factorial. That's 216 minus one over 11 times five factorial, 1320. And then the last one will be one over nine, three, six, oh. Yes, this one, you can use a calculator, but of course, something that we expect you to be able to do will be calc without a calculator and you can put in your approximation. So we put this in the calculator, we get our approximation to be 0 0.746836. And just for kicks, I put in the actual integral into the calculator to see how does this compare to the actual answer. So actual answer is 0 0.746836. Two, four, one, three, two, eight. So you can see we do have four decimal place accuracy. Okay. So um, again, make sure you use what we have established in this chapter to create your new power series for the functions that are, you are being asked to do with on your homework. Okay. All right. That's it.